The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Hey, welcome back everyone live here in Las Vegas with EMC World 2012. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Praveen, the CEO, Akhat Raju, of CEO of VCE. Welcome back to theCUBE. Again, Thank you. CUBE alumni. Thank um, you. VCE, everyone said VCE's dead, VCE's not happening, VCE's not, well, here we are. Twitter's, <laughs> Twitter is supposed to be dead. I read on the weekend, Twitter's yeah. dead, dying. So, <laughs> you know, death is always exaggerated. You guys have been yeah. doing great. So I want to just quickly say congratulations. Thank um, you. Now you guys had a lot of success. Yeah. Give us an update. Some of the yeah. successes you guys have done and just some yeah. of the notable things since we last talked. Absolutely. Um, you know, first of all, thank you guys for uh, inviting me back again. This is, I think, my fourth or fifth time. Great. I really enjoy doing this show. Uh, you know, the first time we spoke actually was uh, VMworld back in 2012, right? And uh, you know, we talked at that time, we were talking about essentially getting to a billion dollars. That was our goal, that was the stated objective. Um, well, we kind of got past that milestone, in fact, blew past that milestone in 2013. Uh, and now that you know, Joe uh, Dochuti mentioned it in his uh, remarks, I can also say we're on a $1.8 billion run rate. Um, we we're going north of 50%. Um, you know, I'm happy to say that that trend continues from 2013 into the first quarter of 2014. So, um, you know, fundamentally, the value proposition of vBlock has been accepted by the market and we're dramatically accelerating the deployment of vBlocks. If you kind of take a step back and kind of understand what's going on underneath. Uh, you talked, to, you know, today morning David talked about sort of the investment that's happening into the on-prem and the off-prem, right? So you talked about two trillion investment on-prem growing at 4%. What's, what is happening is uh, that two trillion of spend, the infrastructure portion of it, is rapidly shifting to the converged infrastructure paradigm, right? So we are right in the sweet spot in terms of that migration of the infrastructure to converged, being one of the early players, and given the fact that we have now you know, over 800 customers in 57 different countries, 2,000 B-blocks deployed, you know, customers, for a lot of customers, we have the safe choice. So that's really what is powering this momentum that we're seeing and our path to 1.8 and beyond. So I got to ask you about that, that um, the trend toward yeah. converged infrastructure uh, and your, your discipline. So you yeah. said we are going with a, what we call a, what yeah. you a single managed entity, right. block of right. infrastructure. Um, but there's a lot of pressure yeah. in the channel. People want to, it's like, it reminds me of my kids, the rules we set for our kids. You yeah. know, there's, there's always, you know, we're going we're yeah. to make an exception. Yeah. Right, how do you not make an exception? Yeah. You know, somebody in the channel, or even a customer says, yeah. well, I'll do business with you. Yeah. I got a big fat check, yeah. but you know, I want to I drop in somebody else's storage or yeah. somebody else's compute. How do you manage that discipline? Yeah, you know, I think, um, so there are a couple of points I'd make there, right? The first thing is, in the cloud era, right, uh, you fun, the fundamental, one of the fundamental principles is you accept a certain level of standardization in order for you to get the benefits of the cloud, right? So we, w when we looked at VCE and the VBlock concept, we said we're going to standardize on best-in-class storage, compute, networking, and virtualization, right? And that's the layer that our customers will have to accept as a standardized uh, platform so we can then deliver to you dramatic agility, really uh, guaranteed performance and availability, as well as a shared application platform on top of which you can run uh, a, 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 as a as bare metal with VMware or any other application stack, right? So we ask our customers to basically, you know, they're not being really a compromise when they accept best-in-class infrastructure, but that's the le level where we draw the standardization. Now, we also believe that you have to maintain a level of integrity in your standards in order for you to deliver the results on a consistent basis, right? So um, there might be certain opportunities that we, we walk away from where we have to break that level of standardization because it compromises the ability, our ability to deliver a great customer experience. Okay, now, so you got a billion dollar, billion eight run rate, which is yeah. large, growing at 50% a year now. Yeah. For those of you who follow the, you know, the, the hot companies, right? They're yeah. the, the, I do work day and service now, yeah. two smoking hot companies. Now they're software yeah. companies, but they're smaller than a billion, yeah. but they're growing at yeah. you know, 50 plus percent. So, yeah. so you're, you're, 
you're up there with those really yeah. you know, high flyers, which is yeah. quite interesting. Now, based on, but so right now it doesn't seem like you have a yeah. TAM problem, but yeah. you know, the Federation has a big appetite. Yes. So <laughs> you've got to expand the TAM, yeah. right? And so how do you do that? Maintaining that discipline, yeah. you know, do you go beyond, for instance, uh, yeah. VMware or how? Think, talk about the, yeah. the, your thinking on TAM expansion. Yeah, you know, let, let me talk about sort of the, our strategy in, in, in two pieces, right? There is a product aspect of the strategy and there's a services aspect of the strategy. This is, you know, in fact, uh, this is a, you know, you talk about TAM expansion. Mm. The revenue from a services perspective is potentially a higher margin, more stickier, and, and more sustainable. So from a product perspective, you know, our vision initially was, hey, let's simplify the way you deploy infrastructure by bringing together compute network storage and, you know, configuring them, testing them, and deploying them, right? That worked great. That was sort of what powered us through to the first, you know, two to three years of our existence. Yep. Then we realized, you know, what customers really want is an ability to deploy a simplified data center solution, not just the product, right? Because we, we found customers coming back to us saying, hey, can you help me accelerate the migration of my SAP workflows? Can you help me you know, stand up an infrastructure as a service in Singapore where I don't have a presence, right? Mm -hmm. So we started to basically expand the capabilities that we deliver from integrating just the hardware components to start to integrate specific application stacks. Replicating as well. the, the, right. the public cloud in a way, right. yeah. So SAP, BDI, mm -hmm. infrastructure as a service, some of the examples of what we do in terms of shipping straight out of the factory, right? So that allows us to basically now, uh, you know, we call it time expansion, but basically, get more of the customer spend in terms of the data center infrastructure that they're trying to deploy, right? Now, the evolution of that for us is to essentially go from a scale-up architecture to a scale-out architecture. A lot of the technologies you heard, right, David talk about, uh, we're very excited about because, you know, we, we, we launched a extreme IO based uh, VBlock in September. Um, you know, we're going to integrate the technologies such as, you know, uh, DSSD uh, into the VBlock as we go forward. Uh, we're also working with Cisco on a lot of their evolution of the UCS platform uh, and the new uh, ACI-based uh, network switches. So that allows us to essentially create a, an architecture that's not only scale up, but also is going to be scale out to mirror what we're seeing, the exabytes of data that's coming on. Right? So that's really our vision, is to basically create a platform, a shared infrastructure platform, built with best of breed blocks that can support any application stack. So we announced that we'd be able to support not just VMware, but also support OpenStack, right, uh, as based on our customer demand. So that's the new aspect of the evolution of our architecture. The second piece of it on the services side, we really took a huge step in 2013. It was a big part of why we were so successful. Um, services for us essentially grew almost at 100% last year off of a low base, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, and it constitutes well north of 12% of our aggregate bookings and revenue. Right? So that is a huge step in terms of uh, our own intellectual property, if you will, uh, where we have experts in the area of converged infrastructure helping our customers with the number one problem they have, which is skill set deficiencies as they make this migration. Right? So our vision really is to go from creating a best of breed converged infrastructure to a company that can truly enable and simplify the journey to the cloud. Right? That's the way we're thinking about our opportunity going forward. Praveen, I want to ask you um, about the product market fit. You mentioned, yeah. obviously, they hit your numbers um, on Convergence vBlock yeah. as validation. You know, classic yeah. product market fit. Close yeah. the book on that, double yeah. down. Yeah. As a CEO, you've got to scale up now. Yeah. What's your strategy? Give us your thoughts on that, because that is cl clearly the management objective. Right. Internally, how are you guys scaling the organization? Sure. Um, and what dynamics are you navigating yeah. in the marketplace? Because yeah. you know you have VCE stands yeah. for something. Is now yeah. you know Cisco's doing things. Everyone's got these things going on. The market's changing pretty radically. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty disruptive. So how do you scale yeah. in that disruptive environment? You know, just from an organization perspective, um, you know, we, we from the time I got here, we've doubled the team. Right, number of team. We're, we're approaching close to 2,000 employees um, in about 12 different countries. So it's a pretty broad footprint. We opened a development center in Cork in Ireland. Uh, for our services, we, ha we have a significant investment in India, in Bangalore, in addition to our you know, headquarters in Richardson. So, um, you know, the team's been growing. Uh, you know, one of the things I like to talk about is the number one asset for VC. What di truly differentiates us in the marketplace is our people. You know, we create, we're creating sort of the new DNA, right? The fused DNA between <laughs> networking, software, storage, uh, and, and, and compute to really create sort of that next generation IT skill set which is the reason why uh, our customers value our employees so much, whether it's a 
you know, whether it's a salesperson or a, you know, pre-sales. Now you talked about sort of some of the dynamics in the market. Uh, you know, as we just discussed earlier, right, the opportunity for us to enable that journey to the cloud is profound, right? It is the single most biggest challenge a lot of our customers face. Uh, it, look, I mean, the, the bottom line for us is the reason we win is because of the customer experience. And customer experience is what really guides our decision making in terms of the technologies. Now Cisco's you know, announced a certain set of acquisitions, technologies, Whiptail, et cetera. There's an aspect of that on the server side which is very interesting to us, which will be part of UCS, right? From a storage flash array perspective, we've uh, released an extreme IO based WeBlock, right? That's our strategy there. Similar on the networking side, uh, you know, the ACI based uh, Nexus switches are best in class. Uh, you know, customers are really resonating with that story of managing software and hardware together. So, you know, we're making choices based on guided by our customers. Now, at the same time, at the end of the day, WeBlock is nothing but a huge computer. It's a next generation mainframe. So if a customer chooses to run a, a different software on it, they're able to do so, right? That's again, talk about the standardization layer. So uh, our real primary focus is to maintain that customer experience as we assimilate the new technologies and, and be able to deliver sort of a, a, a unique uh, value proposition. And to, you know, to that point, the next generation mainframe, um, when I first saw converged infrastructure, I said, okay, this is an evolutionary technique, it's a natural yeah. evolution, particularly the computer and the networking yeah. side. Um, <clears throat> what makes or does, it, yeah. does, does converged infrastructure become yeah. revolutionary yeah. Uh, versus an, uh, an evolutionary infrastructure? Um, and does it need to be? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's just a, um, you know, it's a dramatically simpler way of building the infrastructure, the next generation infrastructure in the data center and the cloud. You know, technology-wise, the, the revolutionary, inf you know, evol the revolutionary um, innovation, if you will, is happening in the core components. Inside. You're right, yeah. it's, it's Viper, flash, right? Flash. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. Flash. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, software-defined networking, right? Um, you know, so th those are things which are then incorporated into converged infrastructure, and we abstract that complexity for our end customers. Praveen, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. We, yeah. we got a break here, but I want to give you the last word. Share yeah. with the folks out there, um, why is EMC World 2014 yeah. so important this year? Obviously, the big news with yeah. DSSD, yeah. just the product transformation, people getting promoted, Jeremy's yeah. now president, got a yeah. new CMO, you guys are kicking butt, taking yeah. names. But why is this moment in time so important? You know, I think uh, Joe talked about sort of this transition to the third platform. And uh, you know, that consists of various steps, right? Converged infrastructure is a foundation on top of which that third platform is going to be built. And you know, a lot of the technologies that are happening here, that, you know, the kind of data center awareness, I mean, it's one of these unique shows where you get a very comprehensive view of the evolution of the data center and the cloud, everything from big data to infrastructure to software, and that's why, that's what makes it unique. Okay, Praveen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest live in Las Vegas with EMC World 2014. We'll be right back. Nice job. Thank you, guys.